Did you know that your favorite chocolate bar and a highly addictive drug share a surprising amount in common? Yes, you heard it right. Today, we're delving into a captivating tale of cacao and cocaine, the shocking similarities they harbor, and why it matters. So we're all familiar with cacao, the super plant that gives us chocolate. It's a staple of many of our diets, our comfort food, and for some, a guilty pleasure. But would it surprise you to know that it has more in common with cocaine than you might think? Let's start with the basics. Both cacao and cocaine originate from plants indigenous to South America. Cocaine comes from the coca plant, while cacao comes from the cacao tree. Nature has a peculiar sense of humor, doesn't it? The next shocking similarity lies in their chemical makeup. Cocaine is a stimulant, a drug that increases the activity of the nervous system. It achieves this effect due to its active ingredient, cocaine alkaloid. And guess what? Cacao also contains stimulant compounds, notably caffeine and theobromine. While these are certainly less potent than cocaine, they still have a stimulant effect on the body, which is why you might feel a burst of energy after eating a chocolate bar. Just imagine, every time you sip on your hot chocolate or nibble on your favorite candy bar, you're ingesting these stimulant compounds. Perhaps that explains why chocolate is so irresistible. I'll let you be the judge of that. What's your take on this? Let's have your thoughts in the comments. Now let's move on to a deeper connection that's rooted in the human brain. Cocaine's addictive nature stems from its ability to increase levels of dopamine, a neurotransmitter linked to pleasure and reward. Cacao, too, has compounds that can increase dopamine levels. The primary culprit is phenylethylamine, which can trigger the release of endorphins and serotonin, neurotransmitters associated with feelings of happiness and well-being. While the effect is not as intense or immediate as cocaine, the underlying principle remains the same. So, the next time you can't resist that extra piece of chocolate, remember, there's a scientific reason behind it. And we're curious, are you a self-proclaimed chocoholic? Drop us a comment below and share your most loved chocolate treat. Another striking parallel lies in the historical use of these plants. Indigenous cultures in South America used both cacao and coca in religious rituals and medicinal practices. In fact, the coca leaf was chewed for energy and to suppress hunger, much like how we turn to chocolate for a quick energy boost. But there's a crucial difference to note here. Cacao, even with its stimulating properties, doesn't pose the same risks as cocaine. Cocaine's potent stimulation of the nervous system can lead to serious health issues, including addiction and a range of physical and psychological problems. Cacao, on the other hand, while sharing some attributes, doesn't have these risks when consumed in moderation. In fact, it's packed with antioxidants, can boost your mood, and may even have heart health benefits. And that's a sweet deal. As we delve deeper into this story, let's talk about the stimulant compounds in cacao, caffeine, and theobramine. When we say stimulant, you might think of a frantic energy burst, but it's not quite like that with cacao. The caffeine content is significantly lower than what you'd find in coffee. Yet, combined with theobromine, it offers a gentle, longer-lasting boost of energy. It's no wonder we often turn to a chocolate bar to shake off that afternoon slump. And did you know that theobromine, despite its name, doesn't actually contain bromine? The term is derived from theobroma, the genus of the cacao tree, which fittingly translates to food of the gods. Now that's a fascinating nugget of information you can drop at your next social gathering. So how does your energy level usually react to chocolate? Is it your secret productivity weapon too? Let's share our experiences in the comments below. Switching gears now, let's tackle the dopamine connection, which is truly fascinating. We all know the feeling of euphoria when biting into a decadent piece of chocolate. Cocaine has a similar, albeit much stronger, effect on the brain by increasing dopamine levels. But let's make it clear, cacao isn't addictive in the same way. Phenylethylamine, the compound in cacao that triggers the release of endorphins and serotonin, contributes to that sense of happiness we experience. But this chocolate high is more of a gentle mood lift rather than an intense rush. So while chocolate might make you feel good, it's not going to create a dependency. Now, exploring the cultural aspect of these plants opens a window to the past. The indigenous use of cacao and coca illustrates how people have harnessed the power of plants throughout history. Imagine a time when cacao was used as currency or in sacred rituals. 
And similarly, the coca leaf served practical purposes, like increasing energy and suppressing hunger. A common thread weaves through the stories of these plants, and it's the human inclination to seek stimulation and sustenance from nature. Do any of you have stories or knowledge about the historical uses of these plants? Let's enrich our discussion by sharing in the comments. It's important, though, to underscore the significant difference between these two. The fact that both cacao and cocaine contain stimulants doesn't equate their impact on our health. Cocaine's potential for addiction and its associated health risks far outweigh the mild stimulant effects of cacao. Chocolate, especially dark chocolate, consumed responsibly, can be part of a healthy diet. It's rich in antioxidants and has potential heart health benefits. Still, isn't it captivating how these two vastly different substances with divergent reputations can have such overlapping characteristics? It's a testament to the incredible diversity and complexity of nature and how these complexities interact with our bodies and minds. So how does this knowledge change your perspective on chocolate or other everyday foods? Perhaps there's more to our pantry staples than meets the eye.